Ito yung LA, nandito sa LA, ito yung Walk of Fame. So famous na ginagawa na pinupuntahan ng mga tao dahil nga sa kanilang mga celebrities na mayroon silang mga signature, mga paa, so kamay, so lahat yun. Ito yung pinaka, uh, I think pinakauna dito sa Amerika, sa Hollywood, na sinasabing TCA Theater, na doon sila naglalagay ng nagpapalabas ng kanilang premiere pelikula. So ito may nag expand dito sa loob, actually nagbayad kami ng $10 each para lang mapakinggan namin kung how it came na paano nangyari yung mga paa at kamay na it was it was just an accident pala. So eventually naisip naman ng ano na well that's nice para kumbaga lahat na artista pag pumupunta diyan, meron silang landmark at nagiging tourist spot. And medyo mahabang explanation nitong mamang ito. Uh, he, sila yung mga bantay dyan. So medyo naubos ang oras ko ah, kasi actually ang cellphone ko medyo, alam mo na, ano lang, cellphone lang ginagamit natin. So tamad na mahirap naman mag-formang-forma talagang vlogger. <laughs> Kaya cellphone lang ginagamit ko. So na full ang aking storage. So, kaya yung ibang part na, na pinupuntahan namin, just like this one, ito yung pinakauna namin pinuntahan doon sa downtown, nung second day namin sa California. Actually, second time ko na pumunta dito kasi last 2019 nagpunta rin ako. Kaya lang hindi pa ako nag-vlog noon. Tapos sa ito ngayon, pumunta ulit kami kasi yung husband ko, first time yan pumunta rin dito sa Amerika. So, lahat namin take note, it's part of being healthy na lahat na pinupuntahan namin, pinavlog uh, ko rin. So, sana you, you watch, like, share, and subscribe naman sa aking vlog kung, kung nag enjoy kayo sa papanood. So, after na itong mapapanood natin to ang pinuntahan naming lugar, we went to... Uh, Beverly Hills. Doon kami pumunta sa mga lugar ng mga alam mo na. Pero hindi naman kami siyempre. Dumaan lang kami doon. Tsaka may West, I think it's West Drive. Makikita, maririnig mo rin kasi si Amanda talaga yung nakakaalam sa lugar kasi dyan nga siya nag-work sa Channel 7, local channel ng uh, LA. Yan. Kaya after nito mapapakinggan natin tong uh, mokong na to eh pakinggan na lang natin kasi sayang din yung bayad <laughs> yan marami yan siyang explain regarding how it came at saka gaano ka explain niya yung TCL theater nila paano nagkaroon dyan kasi at first doon sa San Francisco yan eh nagkaroon yata ng earthquake yun Pakinggan na muna natin siya. Oh, 
house, they actually decorated half of the outside to look like Kansas, and half of it de decorated to look like the Emerald City of Oz. And then over here, we have some more of these Star Wars things. And again, they're mostly fan created. And this one right here, that's again, that's taken from the molds of the original costume. So that's gonna look exactly as it would have looked in the movie. And this company, Sideshow, makes these things. They sell those for around $10,000 very dedicated fan of Star Wars. And even the, 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 the most elaborate premiere in recent memory was actually Star Wars The Force Awakens. That was in 2014. For that one, they used this theater to premiere it. This one right now has 932 seats. The Dolby next door has 3,400 seats. And El Capitan across the street has 1,100 seats. So sometimes for very big premieres like that, you have to use all the theaters in the area for a single premiere. When they premiered The Force Awakens back then, they had to close the street down for about a week to prepare for that and put up attractions and things like that for the uh, VIP guests. The projector over there, that's one of the old projectors. That's from the 1950s and 60s. So that's from the days when they would run movies on 35 millimeter reels of film and press a button to change between the reels. Now they don't have to do that anymore. Since the year 1999 up there, they had digital projection, but in these days, projectors would actually sit up there and press a button to change between those different reels. Right down this way here, we'll see the makeup room. 1927, the theater where it That one in the corner over there, that one with the seat, that really has a seat next to it, is because that is the one that was used at one time by Marilyn Monroe when she would come here for premieres in the 1950s. And underneath that, you'll see there's an air vent built into the wall. That is an air vent that would connect up to the, to the tunnel that used to go from this theater to the Roosevelt Hotel across the street. Now that's been closed off since 1950 when Sid Brown died. At one time, that's the way they would have getting the stars out of the premieres of the Titan Matter. They would be harassed by the crowds. Mm -hmm. Whatever was left of that was destroyed in the 1990s when they put the subway system in the mm -hmm. So except for the project in the ceiling here, Looks exactly as it would have looked in the, in the theater opening. And they um, filmed a movie down here. It was called Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. So Cameron and Diaz had a fight scene carried out to here. They put up regular mirrors for that. And there's upper levels up there. They filmed many more movies like Zombie Land, Forrest Gump, Star Wars Born, Sing in the Rain, uh, Rush Hour 2. Uh, many, many movies over the past 93 years. So it's not just a place where movies are uh, premiered. These where movies are, are made as well. Now here we see some of these pictures of the people doing the Hamptons. That's uh, Clint Eastwood in 1984. That's it's the premiere of Tightrope, who he directed and starred in. Now he wrote his line, you made my day in the cement there. And then they can make these larger these days because they have a lot of room. Now they have limited room, so they make them small. Room for 75 to 100 more. We really run out of room out there. And up here, this one's Sophia Loren. Yeah. Mm. This is uh, 1962. And she actually wrote her personal uh, uh, motto in the cement Solo per siempre, which means only for forever. And it's also tinted green. They could choose the color of the cement in the old days, too. This one up here is Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward. And they were married, so they did theirs together. It's in 1963, and he did his in bare feet. <laughs> and the walls here are hand painted. They're hand painted by a man named Javier Cugat of Barcelona, Spain. And he was a band leader and an artist. He hand painted the walls here, so these look exactly as they have looked in 1927. And you'll see if there are holes in the wall, go all the way down for candles. One time, they had lit candles in the wall here. Mm -hmm. Hollywood, land of magic, glamour, and make believe. Home to the studio dream factories. Since the motion picture industry first became the preeminent source of American entertainment in the early 1920s, the Hollywood community has held a mythical spot in the imagination of movie lovers everywhere. Perhaps no place within that community epitomizes Hollywood and all it represents more than the Chinese theater. 
with its ornamental facade and courtyard of famous hand and footprints, the TCL Chinese Theater is the most visited site in all of Hollywood, attracting an average of 5 million visitors each year. Hi, I'm Ben Mankiewicz, host of Turner Classic Movies, and I'm going to be your guide for this look at one of the most famous movie palaces in the world. In addition to movies, the theater has also played host to theatrical premieres and assorted red carpet events over the years, including three Academy Award ceremonies, and most recently, the AFI Fest, as well as the annual TCM Classic Film Festival. You're probably wondering how this magnificent movie palace came into being. The Chinese theater was the brainchild of showman Sid Grum, a show business veteran who began his career in theatrical exhibition in San Francisco, managing several theaters for motion pictures and vaudeville acts. After losing two theaters in the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, Grumman relocated to Los Angeles where he built two movie palaces, the Million Dollar Theater in downtown LA and the Egyptian Theater on Hollywood Boulevard, currently home to the American Cinematheque. For his third and final venture, Grumman partnered with United Artists founders Mary Pickford, Douglas Fairbanks, and Charlie Chaplin as co-investors in this lavish movie palace. Construction on the Chinese theater began in January 1926 and took nearly a year and a half to complete. The theater had its official opening on the evening of May 18, 1927, with the world premiere of Cecil B. DeMille's epic, The King of Kings. Patrons were treated to a live stage show called Glories of the Scriptures, designed by Grauman himself. Plus, there were appearances by nearly every major star in Hollywood, not to mention the film itself, which was accompanied by a Wurlitzer organ and a 65-piece orchestra. Grauman spared no expense in making the Chinese the grandest showplace in Hollywood. At a cost of nearly one and a half million dollars, roughly equivalent to 30 million dollars today, the theater boasted a one-level seating capacity of 2,058 and a Wurlitzer pipe organ with sound emanating from the auditorium scene. Patrons were also treated to extravagant architectural details imported from China. Those two lions in front of the theater are from the Ming Dynasty. The lobby is adorned with original works of sculpture by local Chinese artists. And those colorful murals in the lobby were created by artist and actor Ki Lu, best known for his role as number one son in the Charlie Chan films of the 1930s. Probably the most famous aspect of the Chinese is its forecourt, filled with the hand and footprints of stars from the silent era to the present. You might be wondering how this first started. Well, legend has it that Sid Grant was escorting stars Douglas Fairbanks, Mary Pickford, and Norma Talmadge from the Roosevelt Hotel across the street to check out progress on the theater's construction when Miss Talmadge accidentally stepped into a slab of wet cement. Well, Grumman, never one to miss an opportunity for publicity, seized the moment, getting Talmadge, Fairbanks, and Pickford to make their imprints and sign their names in the wet concrete. And so a tradition was born. Through the years, some 200 stars have made their imprints in the courtyard, along with a few interesting variations, such as John Wayne's fists and Harold Lloyd's glasses. And more recently, Jackie Chan's bare feet and Mel Brooks's six-finger handprint. Handprints of movie legends go from Humphrey Bogart, Marilyn Monroe, and Betty Davis, Clint Eastwood, George Clooney, Brad Pitt, and Jennifer Aniston. How well do your hands and feet size up with those of your favorite star? Oh, hello, Mr. Oh, you were marvelous tonight. Never more black. Oh, thank you. One of the greatest performances I've ever seen in the Chinese theater. Thank you, sir. You know, I've reserved a slab of concrete. May I have your footprints? I certainly shall do that. Thank you, Mr. Oh, that's wonderful. And remember, when you take your feet out of that wet concrete, keep them on solid ground where they have always been. Oh. You'll do that too, Sid, and I'll send you a bill for the shoe. <laughs> Classic film fans might like to know the cement imprints aren't the only items of interest in the forecourt. Beneath actors Greer Garson's cement block lies a time capsule containing a 35 millimeter print of her Oscar-winning film, Mrs. Miniver, as well as a copy of the original screenplay for the picture. It still lies there today, undisturbed, since 1942. Movies weren't the only form of entertainment offered at the Chinese. 
Sid Grauman was famous for his lavish prologues. Those were live staged productions performed before a film. The prologues were always designed with a theme relating to the picture. Many Hollywood hopefuls got their starts as performers in the prologues, including a young Myrtle Lloyd, who would later find fame as William Fowle's wise-cracking wife in the popular Thin Man movies. Over the years, the Chinese has played host to numerous gala premieres and some of Hollywood's biggest films. Howard Hughes hosted the opening of his World War I epic, Hell's Angels, here in 1930. King Kong first climbed the Empire State Building at the Chinese in 1933. Judy Garland made her first journey down the Yellow Brick Road when The Wizard of Oz had its Hollywood premiere in 1939. And Star Wars ran for more than a year here, starting in 1977. Recent films that have made their premiere at the Chinese include Gravity, Christopher Nolan's Interstellar, and Godzilla. The Chinese theater itself has made numerous appearances in films, including the original 1937 A Star Is Born, Singing in the Rain, The Legend of Lila Claire, starring recent and print participant Kim Novak, plus Forrest Gump with Tom Hanks, Iron Man 3 with Robert Downey Jr., and perhaps the most infamous, Mel Brooks's Blazing Saddles. How could he do such fantastic stunts? With such little feet. <laughs> As technical advances in filmmaking were introduced, the Chinese has always been ready to meet the challenge. The first sound film to play here was White Shadows in the South Seas in 1928. In the 1950s, the Chinese offered its patrons the full spectrum of six-track magnetic stereophonic sound. In the 1980s, Dolby Digital and THX systems were installed. This was the first theater in the world to be THX certified. As screen formats widened over the years, so has the screen at the Chinese. From grandeur in the early 1930s, to Cinemascope in the 50s, to Panavision in the 60s, right up to the theater's recent excavation over 30 feet into the earth to create the largest IMAX theater in the world. There has never been a better place to see a movie than right here. Motion pictures have certainly changed dramatically since the Chinese opened its doors in 1927, and today the theater is more than ready to meet any new challenge. The new Chinese is ready to embrace modern movies with a gigantic new IMAX screen, state-of-the-art digital projection and sound, beautifully restored interiors and lighting. All of that ensures the TCL Chinese Theater's position as the premier Hollywood movie palace and guarantees it will continue to thrill visitors for years to come. For TCL Chinese and Turner Classic Movies, I'm Ben Mankiewicz, and I hope you've enjoyed the tour. Okay, natapos din ang tour. I hope you learned something kung may naalala tayo na sinabi siya. After nung galing na kami doon sa Hollywood, sa Walk of Fame, pumunta naman, pupunta kami ng Beverly Hills. So ito yung mga nandito kami, dumaan kami sa West Hollywood. So ito yung mga gay community. May gay community? Puro mga bakla. Maraming mga bakla. Bakla, bakla to. Ayan mo. Talaga. So hindi siya. Tomboy. Tomboy. Mga tomboy. Lahat ang bakla. Diyan lang pwede ka gay community. So papasok kami mamaya mamaya sa gay community. Medyo napahaba kasi ang video ko doon sa Siguro nga si Siguro nga si Si na Jinggi Si na Pacquiao Jinggi Pacquiao O kung sino pa yung mga social dyan sa Pilipinas Dyan talaga namimili sa Rodeo Drive 
Kompleto na siya na mga bilihan. Hindi lang kami nakababa. Kasi nga, walang ma-parking yan. Papapicture sana kami. Pero anyway, uh, nakita ko lang naman. Parang passing by, nakikita mo na yung itsura wow. ng Beverly Hills. Wow, sabi mo sa ano ko to bahay, gated lahat na ba. Ito pag sinabi mo, Rodeo Drive. Yeah. Ito yung Rodeo Drive. Ayan, nakikita mo. Gusto mo mga... Cheese pa So, medyo mahirap mag... Iniquipan din namin yung Beverly Hills. So, nakita namin yung may mga lugar dyan na mga... Medyo mga mahirap mag-park dyan sa Beverly Hills. Talagang maliit yung uh, kanyang lugar. Nakita mo talaga na very... Worthy yung kanyang kalsada actually. So, so dinaanan lang din naman namin. So, makikita natin ito, Beverly Hills. Uh, sobrang gated yung mga bahay dyan. At saka para siyang sa atin, i-compare natin sa Pilipinas. Kung sa Makati kayo, sa Makati area, parang just Marinas Village kasi maraming puno ng kahoy. Tapos, uh, medyo Madas Marinas or uh, Forest Park, parang ganun. Malaking bahay. So dito, dumaan kami dyan sa Rodeo Drive. Siguro dyan namimili sila Uh, yung asawa ni Pacquiao kasi yan mismo ang bilihan ng mga mayayaman eh. hindi siya masyado crowded kasi ang mga pupunta dyan taga Beverly Hills lang din so yan yung Rodeo Drive so lalaki ng bahay dyan uh, feeling ko parang ganun ang motif ko ganun ang theme na ginaya ng Las Marillas Village at saka Falls Park So, eto, nasa labas na kami. Papunta naman kami sa isang lugar na, ayan, pa-drive kami, papunta kami ng Universal Studio. So, sa isang araw, sinulit talaga namin. Pumunta kami Walk of Fame, Hollywood. Then, pumunta kami ng Beverly Hills kasi malapit lang. Then, after that, pumunta kami, pumunta kami ngayon ng Universal Studio. So, medyo naubos na yung ano ko eh, full baga full storage na yung phone ko eh medyo maiksi na lang yung nakuha uh, ko video doon sa uh, San Moni Santa Monica Santa Monica naman napakaganda, ma-enjoy mo yung dagat napakaganda so dito na, no, na napansin nila yung mga malalaking bahay so dito na kami ngayon sa Universal Studio yan ang tawag sa amin, since we are not allowed to get inside, kasi nga, ang naka-schedule is mga taga-California lang. Since we, we came from Arizona, hindi kami pwede pumasok. Parang is schedule pa eh. So, nasa city walk ang tawag dito. Pag pumasok ka, mag-bike ka ng entrance, pero hindi ka pwede mag-rides, no? bawal. Kasi nga, city walk lang kayo. So, within the city area, kaibat-ibat yung picture-picture lang. Yan, yan, nasa Universal Studio kami niya. A universal uh, walk, parang to. Oh, universal na yan, pero wala kang sila. Hindi ka nakapangang sa studio. Welcome to studio. Universal City Walk, Hollywood. Yeah. Here's some important information for your visit. We ask that all guests and team members comply with the following. Everyone is required to wear a face covering during their visit. Yeah. So we are required to wear face mask. So kung magpa-picture ka, medyo tanggalin ang face mask. Face mask, after that, balik, balik ka agad yung face mask. So, medyo nag-ikot-ikot kami dyan ng matagal sa Universal Studio. Kasi it's a picture, maraming picture. At maganda naman kasi ang video. Mga ilang minutes pa, medyo bago gumabi, pumunta muna kami doon sa Santa Monica. Ang ah, ganda ng lugar ng Santa Monica. Hindi ko lang masyado nakuhanan ng mga uh, video kasi nga, full storage, full storage na talaga ang cellphone ko. Hindi pa na nakapagbura. Kaya yun, punti lang nakita ko. Ang, gan, ang kaibahan dun sa Santa Monica, it's a free, since we're a free country ang Amerika, pwede kang kuma, maaga ka, maglagay ka dun ng gitara, mag ka, okay lang, libre lang yun. 
parang entertainment, walang bayad. Basta maglagay ka lang sa harap ng parang parang bucket. Kung may mag-donate sa'yo, that's, that's fine. So marami kami nakita doon na nakaka-enjoy. Ito, ano pa ito eh? Sa Universal Street. Ayan, si Amanda, yung aming tour guide. Thanks, Amanda. So, papunta na kami sa Santa Monica. Santa Monica, isikat yung ganda-ganda ng kanyang beach. Bahala na, wala.